Walsh. So it's all yours, Carol. Um, thank you, Sandy, and hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to Keeping in Touch with Your Tech Trekkers and Why You Should. Um, I have been part of Tech Trek since 2001. Uh, I've been a dorm mom, a camp director at Stanford and Davis, and with Nancy Andron, a state project co-coordinator. During this time, I have met some pretty remarkable people also working for Tech Trek. Some of them are here. So why is keeping in touch important? Watch this short video of Camper Arissa, and you will see why. My name is Arissa Harvey, and I'm currently in my dorm room at UC Merced, where I'm majoring in biological sciences and minoring in physics. My tech check experience was spent on UC Santa Barbara's campus, and it's actually part of the reason I'm in college today. Tech check showed me my immense love for STEM, and it also really helped me figure out how many opportunities and possibilities that the field offers for careers. But more importantly, and even last today, is the confidence that TechTrek gave me to be a woman in a male-dominated field. Even at the age of 13, I still thought of a scientist as a man. I never imagined a woman in a lab coat. So by connecting me to women that really did excel in science, and even girls like me at that age who wanted to excel, gave me the drive to keep pushing, where, pushing to be where I knew I had to be. I have always wanted to help the world, and TechTrek showed me how, even if I had to hold a few hands along the way. Anyways, to all of the girls out there who want to study science, technology, engineering, and math, I'm here to tell you, and TechTrek is there to show you, that you can do this, and you don't have to do it alone. So good luck, make the most out of your program, and I hope to see your work in the future. Thank you. Okay, well, let me turn back on our presentation. Okay, there you go, Carol. Thank you. Um, Arissa was one of my campers from one of my three branches, and she is from a family with many, many obstacles, uh, and is exactly the sort of child Tech Trek was intended for. To put you in the mood, <clears throat> excuse me, the next slide is our four logos from across the years. Next slide, please. There we are. It's a little pixelated. Um, and after this, we have the very first all camp picture from Stanford in 1998. Carol, let me just stop sharing for a moment and reshare because it may be that I still have the share computer sound on, which is what causes that problem. Okay. So let's try that again. Okay. Go. Is that any better? It's much better. There's our logos through the tech track through the years, followed by the camp picture, please. The next slide. There we are. We didn't quite have the t-shirts yet. I wasn't there until later, but uh, Marie Wallback was. Um, so next slide, please. Okay. Um, as we see, these are just a few things, tech track helps our tech trekkers. Um, it helps their families negotiate school systems. It helps with mentoring. It shows campers showing their progress and success makes them feel good and our branch members too. But first, in 1998 or 1996 actually, Palo Alto's Marie Wallback had an idea that grew into the most successful project AAW California has ever had affecting the lives of thousands of young women in California and the lives of hundreds of our members. That was, of course, Tech Trek. By 2020, more than 13,000 girls had experienced some of our 10 camps, one of our 10 camps, and no one can tell this story better than Marie herself. So I would like to introduce Marie Wallbeck, uh, Tech Trek's founder, uh, director at Stanford, a state project coordinator, co-coordinator, nurse, door mom, et cetera, at Santa Barbara. Uh, Marie belongs to the Palo Alto and the San Carlo branches. So take it away, Marie. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I'm so glad that all of you have joined us this evening because I wanna hear your stories. I know only a few of them. And this is a really important important aspect of the camp. I hope that other branches will be inspired to start some of the programs. Um, to tell you the whole history of Tech Trek would take way, way too long. 
but the I'll, I'll tell you a little known part of it. You've just heard that it started at Stanford and the first camp was in 1998, uh, but it was not originally intended to be at Stanford. I had looked at different campuses that were within driving distance of my home in Palo Alto, but considered Stanford was just a little bit more expensive and we didn't have any money. So I'd selected another campus and the more I investigated after we got the grant, the more I realized that in fact, the reason to go to Stanford was safety. And I bring that up because we're all going through this COVID era, wondering if we do really need to cancel camps again next summer or if it would be safe to have them. Uh, no matter what we've done from the very first with TechTrek, it's been safety and then inspiration and education and so on. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> the camps then grew from that first one when Joe Moss came up from San Diego, <clears throat> excuse me, and Karen Manellis came from Fresno because they both thought they'd like to start a camp for the next year. So by year two, we already had three camps. And I recently was telling this to a state leader and, and she said, I didn't really know that. So that's why we're giving you this little summary tonight. Uh, by year five, Whittier and Mills had opened and soon it was Santa Barbara and then it was Davis and second weeks at a couple of the camps. And of course, Sonoma State had been Mills originally relocated. And this was not the design of the leaders of the state. You should understand that we had really planned to have a few camps to service the different areas of the state. But the, the um, wish of the branches was to have more spaces, more beds so that they could send more girls. And they said, we can get the money, just give us the spaces. So it's to your credit that there are that many girls and no program like this is ever done alone. And I can't thank all of the thousands of volunteers enough for their help but it is really the demand of the members of the branches the lead, that we have this many camps. Uh, the uh, surveys done at the camp to see if we're meeting our goals uh, include Tech Trek. This was done seven years after the first camp. We surveyed the first five and, mo and every branch got a copy of this originally. I don't know if you can find it. Posted online is the second one that was done by the, the national office when they were taking it as a program, igniting the spark. And that should still be, still be posted online. Um, the uh, the uh, idea of having a continuing program for the girls uh, is going to be explained more, but I thank you for making that last part of my dream come true because it hasn't been done by every branch and thank you to those that have. But don't forget that or underestimate the effect of one-on-one -on -one mentoring. If, if you, any of you are inclined to do that, it's a great thing because uh, we get the reports back. Uh, I'll tell you just two of the dozens of stories that I could tell you about how that has been successful. Uh, and, mm, Rebecca came from Gilroy in 1999. Uh, it was the first time she had been out of her hometown. She was the daughter of immigrant farm workers and uh, thought that it is so far to come to Stanford and what 45 minutes away because it was a new experience for her. She uh, was really not at all confident that she should be at Stanford. She said, this is for really smart girls and I'm not that smart. I don't think I belong here. A worse yet, she was so homesick, but she had a great dorm mom that worked her through it and she made it as a full participant of the camp. Um, when she went back home, one of the AEW members uh, mentored her all through high school and convinced her that yes, she should apply to UCLA and Stanford and helped her with her applications. Um, Rebecca now has her bachelor's and master's from Stanford. Uh, Juliana attended Tech Trek at Mills and was later a junior counselor when 
uh, it was moved up to Sonoma State. She, after a couple of years, thought maybe her senior project could be to have a tech track type after school program for elementary girls. So she did that, um, reached out to me for more information. Um, we continued to be in touch. I'm not sure she really needed my help. She was pretty competent, but it, you know, it's always nice to have a support system. And she ended up writing her senior paper on that and being admitted to Stanford where she earned her degree in computer science and she's uh, now working at a tech company in the Bay Area. As I said, those are just two of the, the many stories that we could tell. But for now, I will say again, thank you for coming and I wish you all a quiet, safe, happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, Marie. Um, Carol, it doesn't look like we have any questions in the Q&A at this moment. So I think we can um, move forward and I'll have to turn your video on for you, I believe. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. Oh, start my video. Hold on here. Here we go. Okay, there I am. Okay, well, thank you, Marie. Heavens. Um, mm -hmm. Now you will meet seven guests with different perspectives about the keeping in touch story from a camp director, two branch coordinators, two former tech trekkers, and from the college university perspective. You will learn not only why to keep in touch, but how. Um, there's um, the next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, there's one more benefit, you know, um, we can't tell you this enough. Um, when your branch members see positive results of their work, they will work even harder. So, um, camp directors and I collected several of our favorite Tech Tracker stories to share with you, but because of time, we've moved them to Appendix 2 at the end of the webinar. Each one is a treasure, but I will relate one of our very favorites. Could we have the next slide, please? There we go. Okay. Megan Yamoa, the child of an immigrant family, came to Tech Trek at Davis in 2011, sent by the Davis branch. She learned, she grew, and she succeeded. Well, that is an understatement. As you see, Megan is studying at the University of Oxford as a Rhodes Scholar. Um, I heard from her recently and she wanted to make sure everyone knew how grateful she was for the entire Tech Trek program and for the branch members who really helped her and the camp. So um, next I would like to introduce um, Maureen Buchner to give the camp director's perspective. Uh, Maureen was, the, was a co-director at Stanford Hopper for several years. Um, she is now retired and she is the branch coordinator for San Mateo. Maureen, it's all yours. Maureen, could you unmute your... Um, okay, there you go. Why would, it, why would a director wanna keep in touch with past campers? And which ones? Well, we at Stanford often take uh, recommendations during the camp period from teachers, dorm moms, and counselors for uh, campers who might have uh, more talent uh, dealing with people. And they can write up a recommendation, which we keep for two or three years until they're old enough to uh, apply to be a junior counselor. Of course, they can apply online, whether they have recommendations or not. And they're all all the recommendations are looked at uh, each time we're gonna choose counselors. Senior counselors are the older counselors we choose from the ones that we've already had as junior counselors. Okay, so those are the counselors. Then um, there have been many campers who have actually volunteered. Well, I shouldn't say many, we've known some and I'm sure other directors have used them also uh, as dorm moms once they reach the age of 21. We had one who came and was a dorm mom all through pharmacy school. Um, so we're, we're always looking for a mix of dorm moms. And uh, so former campers make terrific dorm moms and also substitute dorm moms. Uh, we haven't yet at Stanford had a nurse coming from the Tech Trek program, but we have had 
pro presenters for the Women's Professional Night from former campers. We have had young, young women teach uh, some of our afternoon classes that are former campers. And uh, I don't wanna leave out the fact that we now have a number of directors in our camps who started out as campers. So I can think of three right off the bat that are directing now who I knew as campers. So those are reasons why we wanna keep in touch with our campers. Also, um, some of them are much more likely to get back to us than others, but we have called people and said, you know, we need another dorm mom. Could you come? Oh, they were thrilled. And we have some who are like just waiting till they can turn 21 so they can come back and be dorm moms. Then the next uh, thing that directors often do is we're often asked to write letters of recommendation. This might be like in my case, to get into the California Honor Society. We have had uh, folks ask us for recommendations for summer internships, for jobs and for college applications. And we're always happy to comply with those. And that helps us keep in touch also and keep that personal uh, messaging going that we just like you to come back. That would be just great if you would come back because eventually we want to turn all the camps over to former campers as directors. Hi, Maureen. It looks like we don't have any questions in the Q&A at this point in time. Carol, it is up to you next. Start video. There we go. Thank you. Um, this chart, there we go. Um, when, when we knew we were gonna put this uh, webinar together, um, I, just, I decided I wanted to know where the branches were now and what they were doing. So I sent out a message, most, most of you watching are branch coordinators. Um, so you will have gotten this message. What are you doing now? And I heard back from about 48, 50 of them. Um, as you see, 16 of them haven't been able to do too much, but I'm sure they would like to. Um, the second batch of 15 have one or two events. That's not bad. Um, and then there are 13 branches reporting that they have several events a year um, and they are offering to help some others of us. But you know, the fourth bar is uh, there are four branches that are doing remarkable things. And you will hear from two of those branches tonight. Um, but um, you know, our, our, all together, we're not doing a bad job. But however, we can always get better. Um, now, our next um, perspective is going to be from the branch, uh, the branch coordinator. Uh, Kim Cross um, is a retired uh, branch coordinator from Chico. She's a very good friend of mine and well, is everybody here. Um, and she was one of the best dorm moms we ever had at Stanford. I wish we had time for you to tell you, for her to tell you why she was the best dorm mom, but we don't. So you'll just have to take my word for it. Um, so Kim. Okay. Um, yes, I was uh, the, the uh, branch coordinator for 10 years and I was a dorm mom for two years and I absolutely loved it all. The areas that I look at uh, for keeping in touch with your campers, uh, one is your branch. Uh, and, and part of this, a good part of this is fundraising. Within your branch, asking the girls to come and speak at branch functions lets your members know what their donations mean to the girls. We also have them come back and work at fundraisers. At uh, Chico Branch, we have what is known as the appraisal fair. And the girls come back uh, for years and years and help with this. They help to educate the public that comes to these fundraisers about Tech Trek, which equals dollars. Uh, they speak to the prospective campers and let them know what camp is like. And they also update our own branch members who are working and who also come to the fundraiser about what they're doing now and what's happening in their lives. Uh, this is really important. 
we have, we started about seven years ago. I started this, it's called Build a Girl. And um, if you, is there, a, th there we go. Um, she's, this is a Build a Girl and I'll, I'll show you real quick. This is an arm that goes on her. She is Velcroed on there. Different parts of her are Velcroed on there. I, I heard from someone once who said, I can't afford $900, but if I give $10, was that, does that really help? So you can buy a finger for $10. You can buy the head for uh, $150. You can buy arms or legs for $100. And in total, this equals $100. We do this at our fundraiser and the people absolutely love to be able to buy an arm and put her, uh, put that arm back uh, up on the camper. Uh, people really like to do this. We also um, give them a sticker that says, I donated to build a camper. And they seem to enjoy that a lot too. So um, it's, it's, it's been a real um, um, money builder for us. Last year, I think at the um, appraisal fair, we built almost three full girls. So that's, uh, that's a real positive. Outside the branch, we have girls who speak at the community and the businesses, the clubs. And um, this shows that the donations go well beyond just that one week at camp. It shows the companies that they're valued by helping us out. And if the company sponsors an entire cost of a girl, we name a scholarship after them. And um, as long as they continue uh, uh, this donation, the um, scholarship is named in their honor. And the girls know when they are presented with a scholarship from a company. Um, what it means for the girls now is that it brings the girls into the AAUW family and it shows them how valued they are. It also shows them that AAUW will be there for them in the years to come. Later, we write letters of recommendation for jobs, colleges, university. Colleges and universities are now giving admission credit to uh, tech trackers. And this also keeps them in the AAUW family. What it means for AAUW and Tech Trek, number one, bragging rights. There's nothing wrong with that. 85% of our campers graduate from college with STEAM degrees. Um, they're very, very prevalent with that. Most report Tech Trek had a direct impact on their choice of study. Um, I was at Panera's not that long ago um, and there was another couple over from us with a little baby and we were admiring the baby. And I went over as I was leaving to see the baby and the woman said, aren't you Kim Cross? And I said, yes. And she said, you were my dorm mom 12 years ago. First of all, I felt very old. And second, uh, she said that she had gotten her degree in chemical ecology. She then married, had the baby, and as soon as the baby was a little older, her mother would be the babysitter and she was going back to get her master's degree. Uh, keeping in touch with your, with your uh, camper also allows the Tech Trek camps to upgrade and, um, uh, and update their curriculums so that they stay revel relevant in today's world. Success of our campers keeps money flowing in to, uh, from companies, uh, but also the families of our past campers uh, continue to donate, as well as the girls themselves, as they go out into the business world, they give us money. And um, former campers become dorm moms, as we said, and camp directors. The success of our camp bodes well for the future of Tech Trek in the coming years. Uh, we have, uh, it's a wonderful advertisement for AAUW. Um, it's kind of a feather in our cap. Each year when we learn about the accomplishments of our campers, um, it shows that we know, uh, not only um, talk the talk, but we walk the walk. 
And it's one of the ways we begin to educate young women. And by keeping in touch year after year, it validates what we're doing. And it shows that we are making a significant difference in the education and lives of these girls. So tech track, for Tech Trek, it, it means we have the knowledge of knowing that this program means so much to the girls now and long-term. We have the satisfaction of knowing the success of developing and running a female-oriented STEAM program. Uh, we have national recognition for AAUW for this program. And as far as membership is concerned, it's a way to bring in and keep members. So questions if you have them. Well, Kim, this is Sandy. It looks like your talk has generated a number of questions. And so Randa Blanding, who is our board to board uh, editor in the communications team is going to be posing those questions. So go ahead, Randa. Um, this, this person, this questioner says, I understand that trekkers can't in for 2020 will not be allowed to be counselors. Will that also apply to next year as well? You know, I don't know that that decision is made above my pay grade. So that's probably something you need to ask um, Carol. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, do you have a funding committee just for Tech Trek? Yes, we do. We have a, a committee for Tech Trek and a committee for um, Tech Trek fundraising. So it's, uh, there are two separate heads of that that kind of combine into one, um, one committee. Okay, thank you. A couple of people have asked about the appraisal fair. Can you explain that a bit? Sure. Um, we have about uh, anywhere from uh, eight to 10 appraisers. They are professional appraisers who volunteer their time and they have a different, um, um, they specialize in different things. And we price this so that I think it's like seven or eight dollars per item or a set. And um, so they they get a, a, an appraisal from one of our appraisers. And um, I can't tell you how many amazing things we've had. The very first year we had this, uh, a man brought his mother in because he wanted her to stop going to garage sales. So he let her bring a couple of things in she had gotten at a garage sale. And one of them was a, um, and I can't remember the, the artist who did this, but the picture was worth almost $100,000. The man no longer tells his mother not to go to these things. Um, but some, some things are appraised just because they're valuable to you and not because of what you might be able to um, sell it for. Uh, so, and then at this, we also, uh, sometimes we have bake sales that go along with this, uh, but we educate as much as possible. The public we have, uh, Carol always brings um, uh, big boards that have uh, our Tech Trek information and uh, so it's a way that we educate the public about what's going on. But we make a, a good amount of money um, every year. A very good question. How do you keep in touch? We have, <laughs> we have a person, <laughs> or sometimes it's a number of people, uh, and that's their job in our, um, in our branch. Uh, their job is to stay in touch with them. So you know that on all of the um, applications, there are, you know, name, address, phone number, uh, email, um, all of that kind of stuff. And we keep that. And so every year we uh, ask them to come back for different things, maybe to speak or to work at, at an event. Um, and so, um, and so this, the head of our, of our, what do we call this? Our kit, <laughs> keeping in touch. Uh, um, it, that's her job, and she constantly is updating and up, uh, upgrading this. And it's all kept on a computer, and it's been passed from one person to the next person. But we do have a a person or persons 
and this is their job in our branch. Okay, do you wanna stop now and go on? I think we'd better. All right, let's do that then. So Carol, you're next, if you wanna turn your video on. Video. Video. Okay. Dark video. It tells me I'm unable to start my video. That's hmm. no, three times we try. Well, we don't really need me as long as you can hear me. <laughs> we can hear you. You know what I look like already. Um, and I really want to tell you about this project. Um, the Stockton branch, you know, Stockton is not a terribly wealthy community. So um, most of their tech trekkers are from families who could not offer a lot of um, extracurricular activities for their children. They, this has been essentially a mentoring experience for the girls. I sort of need, oops, hold on. There you go. If you'd leave that one up for a minute. Um, so this is what I've learned. From Sorry. The, what? Oh, that's okay. This is what I've learned from about the Stockton project. Um, there are about a hundred uh, Tech Trek alumni in the project at any one time. Um, the girls are asked when they are selected, I believe, to go to Tech Trek if they would like to join this mentoring project after camp, and almost all of them do. Um, program's been going on for 12 years. Um, they, um, the girls stay in the program through high school. Those, this is the most amazing part. 100% of those girls who stay in the program through high school go on to college. There are, you can't say 100% about part about anything, usually. Um, they have monthly meetings that are structured with activities focused on science and art and really whatever um, the, um, the advisors think the girls would be interested in. They're trying to give them a broad scope of experience. Um, they also offer, and this is very important, I think, uh, advice, counseling, training, and everyday skills, such as how to introduce themselves, how to talk on the phone, um, how to choose the right high school, because they do have selection in, in Stockton, and how to, you know, how to go to a restaurant and deal with the servers, and, and much, much more that we don't have time to tell you about. The girls take an annual multi-day trip. Sometimes they have gone to Tahoe, they've gone to the beach, they've gone to Sonoma, um, not to visit the wineries, but there are other things to do in Sonoma. Uh, the girls uh, also work at the branches um, home tour. Uh, could I have the next slide, please? Okay, coming along. They go, uh, they, the girls visit a different college campus every year. And it's not necessarily one in Stockton. One year they'll go to a UC, one year they'll go to uh, a state college. Um, so they do get, you know, the, these branch members are just are doing the most remarkable thing. They, it does cost money. Um, they do have a budget of $10,000. Um, as you see, uh, they do rummage sales and bake sales, or they did. And then they discovered the joys of solicitation letters. Um, so now local businesses and foundations are supporting this. Um, and, and it also involves the community. Uh, there was a question earlier about transportation um, that came in earlier. Uh, and I asked Pam Mullet Jones, who is Mallet Jones, who is the, um, the leader of this, this mentoring project in Stockton. And she said they have uh, permission slips that you wouldn't believe. And she gave me a list. And I don't believe it either, except that it's true. They, they are totally covered. The parents do, do not drive the girls to the activities. They bring the girls to a, a central location and then the branch members who have permission um, take it from there. Um, it really is a, a remarkable thing these women are doing for these girls. Um, and, and Pam said that not too many, it doesn't really take that many branch members to do this. The older girls help with the younger ones, um, but truly the results are quite splendid. Um, we'll have a little more about this um, that we'll post on the website because it's, it's such a critically important thing that can be with, you know, it can be um, duplicated. And Pam is quite willing to talk to anybody and help you. And her contact information will be at the end of this webinar. There's a contact page. So you'll be able to contact any of us. Okay, next slide, please. Oops. So next week, questions? 
Should we stop for questions? Okay. So, yes. so Carol, okay. there, are, there, are, there are quite a few questions and Julika is gonna post them. Some are for this section and some are a little bit more general in nature. So go okay. ahead, Julika. All right, so um, how, do the, how do you let the girls know the benefits for us in AAUW and for them? Well, in my various branches, we tell them. You know, we, we, that's part of the interview uh, process. And, and I tell them, we tell them at camp. And you, we can, you know, it's, it's entirely up to the branch on how you tell them and, and why, but telling them is, as the questioner is suggesting, is very important. So if anybody has some other ideas, we'd be very happy to hear them. Okay, so, and how do they get credit from colleges and universities for Tech Trek? I don't know that, except that um, I heard at one point, and I think it may have been Marie Wallback who told me this, um, that Stanford, for example, has a, a place on, well, I guess all college applications do. They have a place for your extracurricular activities. What are the things you have done? And you can put Tech Trek there, and they see, they identified Tech Trek and take it from there. Beyond that, I don't know. Except that, you know, it, it is, we have heard that this is true from several, you know, several campuses. So Carol, you use the term STEAM, and I'm wondering when or if the transition will happen to STEAM from STEM officially. Well, Kim used that. Um, I don't think, I haven't heard that it's going to be changed officially. Um, we've always had art as part of our Tech Trek programs in one form or another. Um, you know, we're not standing there with easels, but um, the artistic sensibility is there. And, you know, there are, there's, 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 art, there's always been art there. Um, it's, you know, it's different. A lot of the curriculum is up to the camp director um, beyond certain restrictions or, or certain things that we all have to do that are good things. Um, so, you know, I, I don't really know the answer to that, except that there's no, we're not saying there can't be any art in it. It's always been there. And how do you get general membership of a branch to get involved? Do you do presentations? How do you make it happen? I would, well, it depends. Um, you can ask them. Uh, you can buttonhole people that you think would, uh, that might work with you. You start with your friends because it's harder for them to say no. Um, and, you know, you build on success also. Um, you know, and if you offer them, if you offer them a goal with some of the things we're learning tonight, that if we do this, this will happen to these girls that we really care about, then you can, then I would suspect you would get some, uh, you know, some people raising their hands. Uh, it's not going to happen in every branch. Uh, not everybody is able to do this. But if, but also many jobs are able to be broken down into small pieces. Kim was talking about one or two people doing all of the Chico uh, calling or you know contacting. Um, you know, it can be one person can handle one person can handle uh, you know one year, and you know you just break up the job so it doesn't seem so formidable. Uh, and again, if anybody has some other questions uh, or some other um, other ways of doing this, I would be more than happy to um, collect them and. The, the website is going to be filled with things we're going to post. So, oh, I'm back on screen. How nice. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, also, are there any software tools that you're using for data collection of the girls' information? Well, when Linda Steinbaugh was the state project coordinator, she took over from me, and then she handed it over <clears throat> last year to Susan Negretti and Alice Hill. Uh, she had she she sent out a an excel spreadsheet to all of the branches and said these are the name these are your campers that you've had all the way back to whenever you started sending campers and this is the contact information that we that the state has on file for them this is what you should update it to and then send the the excel spreadsheet back to her at which point she put it in a database which is where we keep them um, but where, but whether, I, I think Susan and Alice have been looking for this in the files that Linda turned over to her, but I'm not sure they have been able to find it yet. So I, again, I don't know the definitive answer to that. I, it, it was happening and certainly that spreadsheet is still around and 
that's easy enough to do because it looks just like the spreadsheet that you send your camper names to your camp directors. So uh, the, I'm making a note, we will fine tune that question. Carol, we're gonna talk about that a little bit when um, Terry comes up and yes, we, so will we, post, uh, we will post a spreadsheet example after the session. Good, okay, well, why don't we move on then to Terry? All right. Let me introduce her, okay. Um, Cherry Haycorner from the Beach Cities branch um, is, a, is a past uh, branch coordinator, but she is also the current TTAG advisor. And she one has the, keeps the best list of her branch's former campers that I have ever heard of. And she's gonna tell us how to do that. And then as a treat, she will introduce two very special young women uh, who, um, who were their former tech trekkers themselves and they have their very own ideas about keeping in touch. So Terry, take it away. Thank you so much, Carol. Uh, yes, I'm Terry Hayshorner from the Beach Cities branch. And most people are saying, well, there's what is Beach Cities branch? I mean, you know, where is that in California? Because there's a lot of beach cities. And so we changed our name from Manhattan Beach Branch in 2010 to Beach Cities because it comprised uh, when the San, I think it was the Santa Monica Branch disbanded and quite a few. We have members all the way from Brentwood, Pacific Palisades down to Redondo Beach and then inland to Hawthorne, Lawndale, Culver City. It's the ge you know geographical area is pretty big, but we don't have that large of a branch. My branch, uh, <laughs> president will kill me for this, but we have about 50, I think, in our branch. And so when I got involved in um, Tech Trek, and you can go to the next slide. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Well, I will start with these pictures because when I got involved, it was in 2006. And why, like many of you, was because I heard about Tech Trek. And I actually worked for the district where these three girls were from, but I didn't even know anything about AAUW or uh, Tech Trek. And a friend of mine who worked for the same district, uh, she said, oh, you gotta go to this meeting. Um, there's gonna be these girls speaking about having gone to Tech Trek. And I went and I said, I'm in. And uh, so at any rate, that was way back then. And within a year, I was a Tech Trek uh, co-coordinator with two other women. And that was uh, really the beginning of my passion uh, for these uh, young ladies. And so at any rate, in fact, I even took that picture. I remember the 2006 one. Um, and so con consequently, our Beach Cities branch focus is really all about Tech Trek. We, have, we do have a mentoring program. We do, have, it's called uh, Know Before You Go, nicknamed K-Bug, that Dela Sims started. We do give college scholarships only to Tech Trek alums graduating from high school. And we have a course, you're gonna hear more about this, the T-Tag program of Tech Trek alumni uh, group. Well, anyway, before we pass to the next slide, this is interesting because how did, not next slide yet, no. <laughs> Well, that's okay. But the uh, picture here shows 21 campers. That's a huge jump. And I remember going from uh, three to six. We had six for quite a few years. And then, um, and that was supported by our fabulous author's luncheon that's held at the penthouse of the Double Tree Hotel. And um, that's been a staple in our branch uh, for fundraising. And it could support almost up to six girls. So we were fine, happy going along. And so then we got a donor, a couple donors that um, made it like part of their legacy that they are going to donate big for the Tech Trek program. Wow. And we did have for a short time, about five years uh, in um, Hawthorne, there was SpaceX, ha ha. And so they did give us some funds for a while. and. At any rate, this has been great. So we have had 21 campers except, um, and even for 2019, except for this year, of course. Um, but at any rate, 
uh, these are the girls that really have had amazing uh, strides in getting a lot of different um, support through the mentoring and through TTAG. So um, I'm gonna let you, oh, you know what happened in 2017, do you remember when there was the, um, uh, we were preparing for the Tech Trek anniversary, the 20th anniversary. And um, I remember that was the last time we were sent another spreadsheet, but I've been keeping those spreadsheets that came from state uh, Tech Trek. And I had them and then I, you know, I kept those uh, I tried to uh, track all those girls, but it wasn't so hard when there were six girls, you know, and uh, I enjoyed doing it and building relationships. And that's why I still know a lot of these girls that are in college and in careers, et cetera. But it got to be a little bit too much when we got to 21 girls for several years. So that's when we said, oh my gosh, we gotta do this as a team. And just like the other presenters said, yes, we have a team and we call it. Now you can go to the next slide. <laughs> Is she ready? The Tech Trek Data Tracking Team. And this is the team mission, you know, like most of us, what do we want to do with our Tech Trek alumni? We want, uh, we want them to stay connected to our branch. We want them to join. Oh, the, well, this is the newbie. Join and get involved in Tech Trek alumni group. Um, we want them to assist uh, and speak at branch activities and fundraisers, which they do. Amazing. Uh, become successful, ultimately, college students and graduates uh, in, I put STEM slash STEAM, so I'd be a little safe there. Um, and then of course, we'd love it if they become AAUW members in the future. So here's what we did, next slide. So here's the Tech Trek tracking team that actually had its first meeting in January of 2018. And it was just before um, we, I think that spring was the reunion. And uh, so we are so blessed that we have these wonderful women um, that are as dedicated to Tech Trek as anyone. They have not only been on the Tech Trek uh, committee selecting girls, but you know how it is. You do two or three people do like five of the jobs. Well, anyway, we have five branch members right now who follow the same group of Tech Trek alums through high school. That means one starts with eighth grade. Girls, she never lets them go until 12th grade. So that's how our tracking team works. And then um, we have two, we're so fortunate, Tech Trek alum college grads who are also members of our branch, even though they live far, far away, you know, it doesn't matter. They, they do everything digitally anyway. And they follow the Tech Trek alums in college and beyond. And so what do we use? This is what I alluded to before. We use a spreadsheet based on one provided by the state in 2017. And, you know, it includes the list of campers and their contact and school information, very typical. Yes, it's the same, similar to what the branch Tech Trek coordinators give to the camps. But we've been um, adding more columns as we go along and um, the last contact date with our initials, et cetera. But the most important thing are these last two columns, Beach City's branch notes and active TTAG members. So that is pretty anecdotal. It's not like you're having you know, data that you're gonna, uh, you know, pull from, but this is different and that I wish it was larger. Uh, I don't know what your view is, but mine is pretty tiny. But at any rate, um, we track whether they have been involved in Tech Trek alumni group. And if they're on the committee, which you'll learn about, what years they were, et cetera. And then even uh, if they received a Beach Cities College scholarship, I see one from 2019 on the uh, second column, Anyway, uh, many of these uh, helped at the uh, luncheon, uh, whatever they do. And we try to keep track of all this. And uh, of course you see in bold, I don't know how that got bold, but I probably did that, Nick Whistle. And 
Some of you probably know that. That's the National Conference for College Women Student Leaders. And our branch supports that. But who are the ones that we select? Not any girl from any college, only Tech Trek alumni. So then, uh, as you can see, we also have the JC, uh, SC, uh, dorm mom, blah, blah, blah. We have all, the, all of that in another column just before the Beach City branch domes. So at any rate, move on to the next slide. So, you know, what are their responsibilities? We're gonna talk just, it's similar to what we already said. I don't wanna belabor it. We've talked about this, about connecting once or twice a year for information updates. And however you do it, you know, they can do it with email, calling. Some <laughs> the college girls are going through social media. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways. And then of course we encourage our Tech Trek alums to join and get involved in, yep, South Bay, T-TAG, and they get forwarded, the team members, the five get forwarded all the T-TAG meeting information, the activities and events. Uh, so if we don't have those girls join T-TAG, which you'll find out that's a separate thing, uh, they also will get another announcement from one of their tracking team members. And of course, science-based webinars, T-TAG events, um, uh, and we would hope that maybe they bring an alum to those. We select, again, the $1,000 college scholarships. Those are from our database. And of course, the junior senior camp counselors. Next slide, please. Continuing on, I know it seems like, oh my goodness, these ladies do a lot. Um, but we select like I said, two alums in college to attend Nick Whistle Conference. It's uh, asterisk at the bottom, uh, footnoted, if you want to write it down. And then encourage all Tech Trek alums in college to become free e-student members. This is huge so that we can get them really involved right away after they graduate from high school, when they start college, if, they, uh, if their college belongs uh, is a uh, partner of AAUW, it's free for them. Otherwise, it's only $18.81, so it's pretty reasonable. Uh, and the newest thing, uh, I instead of give a grad a gift, now we're more focusing on the equity network through uh, national, and that's uh, amazing. I go on that website. Uh, it's all young people, boys, uh, sorry, young men and women, <laughs> young women, and it's it's something that speaks to them. So I think that is a great resource and a drawing card. Um, again, we invite the college in a, this picture down here just shows our last um, uh, uh, luncheon fundraiser. And we have the one young lady uh, goes to UC Irvine. She's in the black uh, power suit, uh, pantsuit <laughs> and then we have our high school Tech Trek alums also assisted there. Whether they're selling raffle tickets, I mean, it was fun. It was just, just a simple, fun thing. But guess what? They each sit at a different table. So they get to talk to our branch members. And this is a big fundraiser with like 130 people. And at least, um, you know, uh, almost every branch member brings someone. So that's another drawing card for our membership and also uh, to support Tech Trek. Next slide, please. And again, almost at the end here, um, I'm gonna backwards do this. I'm gonna go to 13 first and then I'll end with 12. Uh, you know, we do invite our Tech Trek alum career and college women to speak at our TTAG events. Um, they do women in STEM. Um, this young lady who's in the red, if you see standing next to me, uh, she uh, also put on a tour of her workplace, Millennium Space Systems. And um, she was a 2009 Tech Trek alum and a Stanford grad uh, in uh, mechanical engineering. She provided, like I said, two company tours uh, last summer and it was just a great way to give back. And then the girls saw her uh, later in the summer because we have a summer picnic. And that, I'm sorry, that's what Cushy and the other uh, in Sonar are gonna talk about. But she was a speaker at that event. So 
it, it's uh, you know evolving all the time. Uh, now 12 and at the end, we keep our Tech Trek alums, this is new, connected to our branch and to each other through a newsletter. And this just started this year. Uh, AUW uh, Beach Cities uh, Tech Trek Alumni College and Beyond Newsletter. That's a mouthful. But Nikki Chan is our 2008 um, uh, Tech Trek alum who also was um, amazing. She was a junior counselor, senior counselor, dorm mom. Um, she was a logistics and uh, coordinator of the counselors at UC San Diego. And she was a co-director at UC Irvine. And she's now at Case Western uh, up in, um, you know, I think it's somewhere in Ohio. And she still, she's doing this from afar. And, and we have another partner of hers that uh, is in Boston, a 2010 grad, Andrea, uh, Andrea Rodas. And they are totally responsible to keep connects, connections with these girls. But what I love about the end of this newsletter, and this had all about voting, you can't see this third and second and third pages, but that's what this issue was about, uh, came out in September. But you see in the highlighted yellow, there it says uh, AAUW's newsletter. So she's a member of AAUW, she gets it, she for, puts it in her newsletter. The next one is about the equity network. So she forwards that to them. So everybody's getting this one way or the other. And then she has a survey, <laughs> haven't updated in two years. I know it's very fuzzy and hard to see, but uh, they can go to that and fill in her survey, which is a, you know, um, oh, what is it? Monkey, survey monkey, whatever. And. So at the very end, and this is where I'm going to start to segue, she asked them, even though they're in college or beyond, do, have you joined the Tech Trek alumni group? And what we try to do is to keep them uh, involved. This way, they will come back and speak to the girls, um, the high school, uh, you know, Tech Trek alums, etc. So it's all inclusive and it goes in circles as we know. I love that when it goes in a full circle and uh, you, we've already talked about that in other uh, presentations tonight. So with that segue, I'm very excited because I would like to introduce two of our Tech Trek leaders and uh, T-Tag leaders and it's this program, you know, has been going on since 2014. They're gonna talk about it. Uh, now we have Kushi Kumra, who's the president, and Sanara Subasinga, who is the co-vice president. And they are gonna talk about how T-TAG has impacted them and what is T-TAG? All right, thank you for letting me present. Next slide. Are they ready? <laughs> um, yes, we're ready. Um, do we want to go over questions first? Oh, that's okay. From mine, I didn't put questions up there, but that's okay. Well, we'll okay. answer the questions at the end of- Do you have any questions for me? Okay, sounds good. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Sonara Subasinga, and I am a part of the Beach Cities branch. Um, I attended Tech Trek in 2017 at UC Irvine, and I came back as a junior counselor in 2019. Um, I'm a current junior at Elsinore High School, and I joined the Tech Trek alumni group right after camp, so the fall of 2017. And this year, I was elected as co-vice president of TTAG. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kushi Kumra. I'm from the Torrance branch. I went to Tech Trek in 2016 at UCI and I'm currently a senior at West Torrance High School. Um, I joined the Tech Trek alumni group right out of Tech Trek in 2016, and I was on the committee for about two years, which is something we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, I was elected vice president in 2018, um, where I stayed as vice president for two years, and I'm president for this upcoming year. Uh, next slide, please. So um, first of all, how did we get started? 
So Pam Knoyer, who was formerly of AUW Torrance and two other tech trekkers, founded the group in 2013. Um, Sophie McGuy, a Torrance camper who attended Tech Trek in 2012, wanted to take her experiences from Tech Trek and find a way to extend it beyond a one week camp. Um, their initial idea was to find a way to connect all these girls back together, these like minded girls, um, and create a community for them. Next slide, please. And so what do we do? Um, so our Tech Trek alumni group consists of young women who all have similar interests in the sense that we're looking to prepare ourselves for the future. And so most of us are very goal oriented, um, college bound and interested in a career in STEM. And I think this shared ambition is really the reason why our group bonds so well, because especially in high school, we find that it's harder to meet um, young women who share these interests. And not everyone is as excited about preparing for college and beyond, especially high school girls. And so through TTAG and educating our community on careers, we've come in contact with many STEM career professionals. And this has been really helpful, especially for our high school members when they're searching for STEM opportunities or contacts. Next slide, please. So how are we structured as a group? Um, currently, our group is a tri-branch group. We have advisors from each branch. From Beach Cities, we have Terry Hayes Horner. Palos Verdes, we have Denise DeVenuto. And from Torrance, we have Alice Matthews and Gloria Liu. Um, so we, at the very top, we have our Tech Trek Alumni Group Board, which, is, um, con which consists of our president, co-vice presidents, head of communications, co-secretaries, membership coordinator, and technology coordinator. So this group of student officers oversees the management of the group as well as activities and so forth. Um, below that, we have our Tech Trek Alumni Committee, which is a group of 15 to 20 girls who attend monthly meetings to plan monthly events, as well as discuss current events about women in STEM. Um, and at the very bottom, we have our general Tech Trek Alumni Group, which is about 100 plus alumni who attend our events throughout the year. Throughout the year. So that includes our annual forums and our reunion events. And um, in general, people part of our group join to stay connected with one another. Next slide, please. Um, so each branch can handle their TTAC funding differently. So it could be a part of the branch tech track budget. And for us, we spend very little, mostly because we utilize volunteers and donations. Um, for example, any speakers we have are usually volunteers and our members bring food for our events. We also received a grant from Symantec, which is a STEM company that we tour every year. And with this money, we were able to buy T-Tag shirts for our committee members. Next slide, please. So how do we recruit girls? Um, typically, we um, the main form of recruitment we use is the Tech Trek celebrations that follow the camp. So we personally go up to girls after the branch celebrations with flyers and we, we are able to talk to the parents, talk to the girls, and this lets us have one-on-one -on -one interaction with them, especially when Tech Trek is fresh in their minds. Um, the branches are three branches, also typically let us um, do a quick PowerPoint presentation after the celebration is over, um, just to introduce the idea of the Tech Trek alumni group to the girls. Um, beyond that, our, the, our branch advisors continuously advertise TTAG at their branch meeting and events. So they'll, they'll send invitations for all of our events to recent and past tech trekkers. So I joined TTAG in 2016 through my branch celebration. Um, I remember our president back then had given a speech about, about what this group was doing. And I remember being very just drawn to the idea of this group of girls who were very interested in STEM and it's something that I hadn't experienced before. So that's initially how I got interested. And sort of similar to Kushi, I joined TTAG through an event. So a branch advisor actually told me about the holiday potluck and I remember when I attended, I was so amazed by all of these older girls that I met. And I think that's really what attracted me to TTAG, um, seeing these older girls and they were like role models to me and they're so invested in their future. So after attending the potluck, I did join TTAG and the committee as well. Next slide, please. So this is a sample of the flyer we typically hand at events. Um, 
These are flyers that we, we can give to girls and parents and that our advisors can um, distribute as well. So it includes um, what we do as a group, who we are and how they can join and how to contact us through either our email or social media. Next slide, please. So our annual TTAG events, um, before COVID, we would hold annual events in libraries. So we would hold a discussion panel of speakers and these events were also open to the community. So it wasn't just TTAG there. So we would post flyers in businesses and schools for the public. So the first two events, Women in STEM Careers and College Prep 101, um, those were our um, annual events in libraries with the discussion panel. Um, aside from these informational events, we would also hold social events for our members. Um, for example, during our annual summer reunion picnic, we would all get together at a local park and socialize, um, connect with one another. We would even play games or hear from former tech trekkers who are either in college now or they graduated and they're in careers. Um, for our holiday potluck, which I mentioned earlier, we would donate to charities as well. So in the past, we've donated to the Downtown Women's Shelter, um, as well as the Paradise Fires. And lastly, we have toured colleges and STEM companies as a group before COVID. Um, and this includes SpaceX and the Symantec company I mentioned earlier. Um, and both of these were amazing opportunities. Next slide, please. So um, with COVID um, in June, we heard about from all three of our branches pretty quickly that um, the 2020 Tech Trek girls would not be able to go to camp this year, which was, um, we were all as a group, we were all very disappointed to hear that because we all know how we benefited from Tech Trek and um, being in that environment. So it was around June, mid-June, where we came up with the idea of a virtual STEM camp for these girls from our three branches who um, wouldn't be able to have a traditional tech track experience. So that's when we started organizing this and um, sort of kicked it off. Um, and it developed into a week log camp from July 27th to, 20, to the 31st um, with traditional um, tech track classes like chemistry, marine science or forensic science, um, as well as um, as well as groups for the girls that mimic dorm groups. So we would use Zoom breakout rooms to host discussions after the classes um, where each group had one TTAG girl leading the discussion, um, acting as a junior or senior counselor. Um, so they would ask questions and girls were able to talk amongst each other about what they had learned. So we did our best to mimic a traditional tech trick experience. And um, the teachers kept the girls engaged throughout this experience. So for example, the marine science teacher hosted the class from his lab at UCSB, which was very popular with the girls because he was able to show them marine animals and plants and um, it kept them very engaged. Um, our forensic science teacher was actually a former tech trekker, Sarah Gittinger, and um, she, uh, she did an amazing presentation on forensic science and she would have girls unmute and answer questions and um, interact with them personally. So it turned out to be very successful. Um, we also had presentations on high school prep, life skills, as well as a tech and graphic design career. Um, overall, we had about 50 plus girls from all three of our branches. And um, till today, um, we still have these, most of these girls continue to stay engaged with us in our monthly meetings and our monthly events, which is great. So we were um, happy to be able to host something for these girls and keep them as a part of our community, even if they weren't able to have a traditional experience this year. Next slide, please. So this was the schedule for our STEM camp. Um, on Monday, we had the girls pretty much get to know each other and introduce them to two presentations. Um, and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday were more consistent. We would have classes, a discussion group, lunch, and then it would just be repeated. Um, Friday was our wrap-up day where we had two presentations and um, a final slideshow and then a deeper introduction into the Tech Trek alumni group to them. But it turned out to be a very successful week. Next slide, please. Um, this is um, just some screenshots from some of our classes. So we encourage the girls to keep their cameras on the entire day, even if it was during a class, but to keep their mics muted. 
And we did notice that they heavily utilized the chat feature in Zoom to communicate with each other, as well as ask questions, exchange contact information. Um, for marine science, um, a, a sample format that we used was um, one of our TTAG girls would monitor the chat throughout the lectures for questions and then relay them to the teachers. Other teachers like the girls to physically raise their hands or use the virtual raise hand feature in Zoom. So it definitely varied um, how the teachers conducted their own classes varied um, class to class, but overall it um, worked out very smoothly for us. Next slide, please. And so now um, during COVID, Zoom has proved to be easier for all of us to get together more often. Um, since Zoom, our attendance has actually been more successful compared to before. And this actually applies to myself. So I moved to Lake Elsinore before high school and I wasn't as heavily involved with TTAG due to my distance. Um, but now with Zoom, I'm actually able to participate and even serve as an officer this year. So Zoom has definitely benefited our group in that sense. Um, and during this time, we are organizing monthly activities and events, as Kushi mentioned, um, to continue to keep our girls engaged in TTAG and to allow them to get to know each other. So one example is our movie night. Um, Kushi streamed hidden figures through Zoom. And although the video was slightly laggy, it did prove to be overall successful, even with over 50 people on Zoom. Um, we also used breakout rooms to host discussion groups afterwards. And that allowed the girls to talk and get to know each other even more. And then games are also very popular amongst our um, members. So it's really allowed us to break the ice and interact more. And then of course, we continue to hold monthly TTAC and board meetings to plan these events together for the group. Next slide, please. So on the top left, you can see a picture um, from our Women in STEM forum at the library. And on the top right is a photo we took at our monthly TTAC, um, at one of our monthly TTAC meetings. Um, and this is where we made centerpieces for the 2018 Tech Trek reunion. And lastly, the bottom photo was taken after our group watched Wonder Woman during our 2018 holiday party. Next slide, please. Um, so we'd be happy to answer questions now, but if um, we're not able to answer your questions during this time, or if you guys have any other questions, um, feel free to email us at techtrekalum at yahoo.com and um, definitely check out our Instagram page. Um, and for more pictures and information about past events and our group, you can also check out the AUW Beach Cities website. Um, we do have a page on there as well. I would like oh. to... <laughs> Terry, I was just going to say, I'm going to turn off the sharing so that the three okay. of you can be on screen. We have a couple of questions that Rand is going to pose for you. Okay. Randa, are you there? Yes. Yes, I am. Have you had good response from your 2020 trekkers? Uh, yes. I, I know the young ladies here could answer that. What happened is all of the girls, um, in order to be part of the virtual camp needed to sign up with TTAG. That's actually an interesting concept. And um, it's not just like, they're all Tech Trek alums. TTAG is in addition to being a Tech Trek alum. And the camp, in order for us to work with these other girls and to have their email addresses, they had to uh, give them to us. Uh, and Cushy being very, very organized and very trustworthy uh, is also one of the ones who helps with that list. So all of them, except I think there were 59 selected and 52 actually went to the camp or Wonderful. participated in the camp. We did also hold surveys and uh, we received a lot of positive feedback from the girls afterwards. Yeah, and many of the girls, I would say about at minimum 45 of the girls have, um, you know, we've seen them at least once after the camp at our um, events. Um, definitely our movie night, that was pretty much just a few weeks after the camp, we had about 50 girls at the movie night and majority of those girls were the 2020 girls. So we do consistently keep on seeing them now, which is great. Yes, uh, one, one of the participants is asking, um, one of the 
guests have been asked, are we trying to contact our alumni to date, um, to update their contact information and having a hard time getting responses? Do you have any suggestions on how we can get them to respond? That's part of tracking and that's very true. We have our team and they express some of the same feelings at times, but uh, I think basically, you know, after you've tried to contact them a couple times on uh, email and if they don't respond, I'm assuming their email has changed or they're just not, you know, let that one go. They don't get rid of it, they just let it go. And so then you need to call, you need to call the parent or the, or the girl. And that's how I always have done it. But, uh, you know, it's up to the tracking team, but that's the best way. And like I said, even now I have a, a senior who's my mentee. I'm a mentor. I'm in the mentor program too. Uh, and she's now a senior. And she said she would help to find some of her friends that she remembers that are the 2016 girls that are graduating. And she wants to try it. She's like, I can find them on social media. So, you know, if the girls are on there, then they want to be found. So that's just another way to look at it. Okay, I have one more question. And what do you find to be the most rewarding about the alumni group? Getting together with like-minded girls or connecting with older women who are mentors? Um, I'll take this one first. Um, I, it's, I, I feel like the first one a bit more, but both are pretty equal. I know um, an example of both. So when I joined um, and eventually when I got to high school um, and we spend at these meetings, we just, we just don't go through a list of items. We also end up talking about what we're doing in school, what we're doing outside of school and what's happening in our lives in general. And so through T-Tag, I found a few other girls who were a part of the same robotics league that I participate in, which was great because then we had a common discussion point and we were able to compare our team's robots and we eventually saw each other and met each other at different competitions. And so that's just an example of how we're able to connect with each other beyond going to Tech Trek. Um, on the other point, um, I think being able to talk to these women as mentors is also amazing. I know um, after my freshman year, um, I actually got an internship through Pam Knoyer, um, one of our um, T-TAG advisors. And that was an amazing experience for me for the summer. And it's something that I definitely would not have gotten the opportunity for had I not been in T-TAG. So I think both have its benefits. I don't know, Sonara, you want to speak to this? Yeah, so like Kushi said, um, for the first point, I think that T-TAG really attracted me because we're all like-minded. And um, it's really inspiring to me, um, more than just being able to talk about similar interests, but to see these older girls, especially when I first joined, um, to see them pursuing college and talking about this inter internship they did this summer or um, something exciting about STEM that they're doing or involved in. And it really inspired me to do the same, um, or at least just talk to them about, about their experience um, as a middle schooler as well. When I was a middle schooler, I wanted to hear about high school, um, so I think that point definitely um, is what attracted me and made me like T-TAG. Um, but then with mentors, I've learned so much and being able to meet all of these amazing women has been an amazing opportunity. And I don't think I would have gotten that anywhere else if it weren't for Tech Trek. There's nowhere else I would have met amazing women like this. Um, and to be a, a mentee for, um, with like the mentoring program and then I'm a current mentee now, um, so I think it's definitely a valuable experience. Um, I couldn't have gotten anywhere else. Thank you so much. I want to add just a few comments, if that's okay. Sure, go ahead. Okay. I just want to thank Cushy and Sonara. Your presentation was spectacular. Um, and you can see, I'm talking to the audience now, that you, these young women and as well as other members on the T-TAG board uh, are well equipped to organize and run their own T-TAG group. It's a unique thought, but it kind of runs like an AAUW branch, but with high school students um, and middle school, of course. Uh, I, I think it's a real interesting comparison. Um, T-TAG truly promotes leadership and networking as much as science-based programs. Um, and so I think that 
this is a, a whole different focus uh, in some ways, but it really lends uh, them. I mean, when we have women in STEM, they're the liaisons with these women in STEM. They're responsible for getting their bios, their photos, and, and these are young girls, some of them. I remember Cushy doing it when you were in eighth grade, you were leading a woman in STEM forum. Well, you know, <laughs> uh, it's pretty amazing. And um, I just wanna thank uh, AAUW California for providing us with this opportunity to share about our own Southern California South Bay TTAG organization. Um, and I just have one last word uh, my friends know that that's never true because I go, but at this point, I just would like to say a word about the possibility of TTAG being recognized as a statewide organization under the Tech Trek umbrella. It's possible. It is currently in process with the state board. Uh, and it's so very exciting for us and the TTAG members. So stay tuned. <clears throat> Okay, thanks Terry and Sonara and Kushi. I think we're gonna move on and I think that Donna is our next presenter. Let me bring up the presentation. And Donna, you wanna turn your video on? Okay, take it away, Donna. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm Donna Lilly, and I have been college university chair for the state for many years, and it really gives me pleasure to tell you a few things about why te uh, Tech Trek, how it's influenced uh, students on campus. Next slide. This young lady, Kara Tolman on the left, um, she was a tech trekker in I think probably 2013. And I never met her. I did not go to UCSD when she was there. But this young lady is now at Cal Poly and I interviewed her for a scholarship at San Diego Air and Space Museum in San Diego where I am a director. I'm just bringing this up because the Tech Trek girls need funds to go to college. And AAW is wonderful. We give thousands of dollars in scholarships every year, but there are lots of other organizations. And she is now studying at Cal Poly um, Aerospace Engineering. Next slide. Lady on the left with the red, um, Ty, she is president, was president of UCSD. Lady in the middle is a junior counselor. I convinced her along with other people to become a junior counselor at UCSD. And you all know uh, Roseanne Child, director for many years at UCSD. These three people invited me to go to have dinner with them at the cafeteria with 110 tech trekkers. On the way to uh, a breakout session that evening, the president said, Donna, can I talk to you? Oh, absolutely. She said, Donna, what am I going to tell these 110 girls? I don't talk to seventh grade girls very often. And I said to her, why don't you explain why and who influenced you to become a PhD in chemistry? It was very successful, very. Next slide. This young lady, Sharon, um, she really um, grew up in a very different situation. She grew up in Nigeria. She was in the US military for six years and she became a student at Cal State San Marcos. And that's where I met her. She did not have an opportunity to become a tech trekker, but 
she was the person on that campus who welcomed every Tech Trek student who went to that campus. And she became, she organized a student organization on the campus and really welcomed and helped mentored all of, uh, all of the Tech Trekkers on the campus at, um, in San Marcos. And now she's studying at Johns Hopkins. Next slide. Okay, you all know about National Conference of College Women Student Leaders. We call it Nick Whistle. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, this Nick Whistle was canceled in 2020. However, in 2021, that's going to be, I don't know what it's going to be, but the AAW National is working on this. The people who come back from Nick Whistle tell us, and you know this, the conference changes their life, their perception of what they want to do in their life. She, Kanisha, she said, I now can stand up in front of a group. I can give a presentation. She said, I learned all kinds of things at Nick Whistle. I would say in 2019, there were probably 60 or 70 students from Campuses in California. This changes people's lives, it really does. Next slide, please. Teamwork and mentoring. UCSD, the girls who graduate after sev seven days at Tech Trek learn how to live on a campus, but they also learn teamwork. And the young lady on the left is now, I believe, in college. I'm trying to keep track of all these girls who I meet. And how did I meet her? I had a meeting that I was planning and I wore my AAW cap. And the mom and the daughter said, AAW, oh, I was at Tech Trek. Okay, here we are marketing again. We have to wear our little t-shirts. We have to wear our hat. We have to tell people who we are and welcome them. And that's how we get new members. And that's how we get tech tricks, tech trickers. Next slide, please. At the college level, when you graduate, and you want to go get a job, you really have to know how to negotiate. Not just your salary, but benefits. And AAW for 20 years has had Start Smart classes all over the United States. Now we cannot do that face to face, but we have Start Smart and Work Smart on the website. The website address, if you want to write this down, is AA. UW. Sorry, it's salary.aaw.org. S A L A R Y dot A A U W dot O R G. It's free, it takes about two hours. You can learn how to negotiate your salary and benefits. Free for anyone. Next slide, please. 2018. We had five, I think we had five, here pictured four, Tech Trek panelists, and they spoke at our AAW convention. This type of situation, when you, when you are invited to speak, should go on a resume. And I think resume writing is going to be something that we can do at a distance. We don't have to meet face to face. But if a branch wants to really reach out and work with Tech Trek girls who they followed through high school, they should work on resume writing. Next slide. Community collaborative sponsors. In San Diego, we are sponsoring an artificial intelligence education webinar. It begins in January of 2021 and it goes all the way through March. And we will be contacting 
I don't know how we'll do it, but Sandy, Gabe will help us contact all of you and all of the five, four, four or 500 e-student affiliates on campuses in California and invite them to the AI education web webinar. And our little branch, we only have about 50 people, but we have sponsored this wonderful webinar and we've given 10,000 for scholarships for, for high school girls and college girls. So you'll hear more about this. Okay, next slide. Very quickly, benefits of the Tech Trek program to a college student. If you do not know, on the AAW website, there are archived research papers. They're briefings, some people call them white papers, but they have a definite point of view about issues and the mission and that AAW is concerned. Learn how to negotiate your salary through Start Smart and learn how to negotiate a raise through Work Smart. I think one of the most important things for tech trekkers to learn, and they start learning this probably on the second day that they are at the camp. They learn how to be a leader, they learn how to listen, and they learn how to be a team player. Uh, this is important, not just in college, but in life. Thank you so much. And this program has been, I have learned a lot this evening. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Donna. We're going to turn it over to uh, Carol to wrap up now. Uh, we are getting a little bit late in the evening. We're a little bit past our time frame, but I think, uh, Carol, you have another slide you wanted to go through. We don't have any questions in the Q&A at this point. Okay. I do want to thank Donna, and I want to thank all the rest of our um, panelists also. Um, so what have we learned tonight? We have learned the why and the how of doing this. And I want to say, if you want, if the rest of us want to st have our tech truckers start something like T-Tech, it seems to me that the one way to do it would be to approach a couple of those girls that every branch has, that the tech truckers who are extra enthusiastic about things, um, they would be the ones to start it. So that might be, be helpful. Um, I also want to interject something here. Um, um, Kushi, I believe, said that the T-Tag donated um, to the Paradise Campfires uh, Fund. And I want to tell you that Arissa, the young lady who was in the video at the very beginning, uh, lost her, her house and all their possessions in that fire. So she would have been a direct beneficiary of, of our T-Tag girls. And thank you very much for her. Um, they, We've learned also to that we need to keep we start we need to start really keeping track with um, with with put it in your computer. But one thing I want to add is that once you get it in your computer, don't keep it yourself. Make sure you send it to all your branch members because things happen. You know, uh, things happen to paper, things happen to computers. So the more people who have it, the best the better chance it has to keep going. Um, I do hope you all learned some few ways of putting keeping in touch to use. You won't regret it, and neither will your girls. I also want to thank all our panelists tonight, plus the technology guru, Sandy Gabe, and her expert team for showing that women do do science, math, engineering, and, tech, and technology. Thank you, and good night.